And if you're coming in, if you're just coming into this, what I'm doing today is I am first off gonna read three different jobs that came to me very recently. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up to questions, Q&A if there are any questions. And is this a good one to read? Yes, this is good, okay. This next job is a cybersecurity engineer and this is in Aurora, Colorado. They're looking for a secret clearance. Before we start, you should know that if you're wanting to go deeper into this or if you're wanting to know how I'm able to get these awesome $78 an hour jobs, you go to Combo Courses, you can sign up for free. It has free courses and stuff there for you to check out. Go ahead and check that out. All right, let's get into this one. So this is Cyber Security Engineering Job in Aurora, Colorado. We offer two types of benefits packages. Class one, full of benefits and it pays up to $61 an hour, depends on experience. That's what DOE means, by the way. And class two is limited benefits, no sick leave, no holiday. Basically, they don't do any of that. They just give you a fat check, but you're making $78 an hour, or it depends on the experience. So it could be more or less than that. So in this case, I would, you know, it depends. If you have a family, I would always go for uh, any kind of packages, any kind of benefits, because the thing is, the medical in the U.S. is it sucks. It's just it's horrible. Even with insurance, it sucks. But if you've ever had third party insurance, which I have with my family and it, it's horrible. So what you can do with this one, if, if you're single, I would take this one because it's a fatter check. But you can get you can go get independent insurance. The pro problem with independent insurance often is that their deductible is really high. But unless you know, so you guys know something I don't know. The ones that I've had where I had to get my own insurance. It's just not that good, you know. As you know, the the healthcare in this, and just my personal opinion, healthcare in this country is is really not good. So whenever you can get those benefits, the companies get better benefits than an individual does. That's just the nature of the beast. That's just how it is. They said they are looking for an individual with a cybersecurity engineering to join the cyber engineer security engineering team for cybersecurity position in information assurance, supporting the development maintenance of custom solutions and assessment and authorization activities. Great, so this risk management framework once again. Okay, key responsibilities include, but are not limited to, security, compliance, and vulnerability scanning. So you're gonna be doing some vulnerability scanning across multiple platforms and networks. So that means you're going to be looking at Windows systems, you're going to be looking at Linux systems, and possibly Mac systems. Prepare for supporting and or leading security test and evaluation activities for program sell-off of security related requirements. So you're going to be part of a security testing and evaluation Activities. This is something that STNE is something I've done before. I can speak to this one. Basically, what it is is you'll have a you'll have a system like a mission system, right? A mission system means it's a server or a server with laptops or a server with workstations or a network. It's a mission system, meaning it has one function. It could be uh, we gather information from these satellites or we we monitor a sunspot that's you know. We monitor the sun or we monitor the moon or or at least speaking from my own experience doing STNE. What I would do is I would go to the site that's doing some kind of research or something, right? This mission system. And then I would look at it, I would run a scan on it and run the scan on it. I would collect the data and say, okay, what security controls are being met or what security controls do we need to fix? And then is the system still working after we put the security controls on it? So those are the two things you do. You test it to make sure the controls are on there, and then you're part of the activities to make sure it's still functioning when the security controls are on there. And then you're also evaluating how well the security controls are on the system, on the mission system. So it's kind of preparing the organization, whatever the, you know, the Air Force or Department of Defense or Department of Meats or whatever department it is. And then it's preparing them for a third party assessment is what it's doing and making sure their system still works after security controls are put on it. Okay, let's keep going here. Applying knowledge of current information assurance policies. That means security policies. 
as a contributor to the architecture and design of the secure solutions to the customer's needs and requirements. So the customer has a certain level of requirements that they have to meet. Requirement is like all systems must have third, uh, multi-factor authentication or all systems must have physical security, must be physically secure, must have a guard posted outside, must have tripwire outside, must have, there's all these different requirements and those are dependent on the level of the level of the system, the classification level and things like that of the system. And that's what the requirements are based on. And then the requirements dictate what goes in the security policies. And basically they're saying you are part of the team that is going to make sure that those security solutions are there and point out if they're not and work on it with the team that fixes it if it's not on there. Okay, performing hands-on technical review of custom custom developed code or secure coding errors. This is another thing that I've had some experience with. So this means that the organization will have uh, developed some some software for say analyzing the moon the solar cycles of the moon whatever the mission system does right so they develop some javascript so sometimes what the organization will have is they'll have a they'll have a another software that they'll be able to run all the code through that software will be able to de to determine if there's any kind of vulnerabilities in the code that's one of the ways that you'll do it or, or if you happen to be a software engineer in your background you'll be able to just look through the code and say okay you know, here's a vulnerability right here, or why there are no, why there are no notes in this code, or things like that. That's kind of a specialized uh, skill right there that not a lot of people do or know. Reviewing static or binary code analysis finding and recommending uh, mitigations. So that's what I just said. Perform hands-on technical implementation of security controls comprised of COTS. And I don't know what FOSS is. Anybody, you guys know what FOSS is? I see a couple people out there. What is FOSS? I can't remember what that is. COTS is commercial off-the-shelf products. FOSS, I don't, I'm having a, <laughs> I don't remember what that is. As well as custom developed products. Pairing for writing and presenting trade studies, cost-benefit analysis, reports, and briefings required. Okay, so let's break this one down really quick before we go on. So preparing for writing and presenting trade studies. So this means like, so what they're looking for you to do is say, okay, this organization needs a firewall, right? And they're like, okay, well, what firewall do we get? They're saying, when they're saying, look at trade studies and things like that, what you would do is you'd go online or go to the vendor's site or even talk to the vendor directly and say, and determine what firewall, first off, what can we afford, right? What kind of um, deal can we get? Can we get a deal where we have three years of their of their software um, support? And then is the software still supported, right? So you don't want to get some unsupported end of life software. You want top of the line software to protect your assets. Looking at trade studies is like you're analyzing. Okay, what is the requirements of our organization? You know, what what is there a list of firewalls that we can get? And then what's the cost benefit analysis? What can we afford? And then can we afford to not have a firewall? Can we afford to have an end of life firewall? Can we afford to have an inadequate firewall? Can we afford to get this high end firewall? Do we have to get something mid tier? You know, so that's what they're talking about. And then you, when they say reports and briefings, you would be gathering all that data and then you'd put in a presentation. You put in like either PowerPoint or you put it in a write up a document saying here's why we should get the Cisco ACA firewall ASA firewall here's why we should get the Palo Alto firewall it costs X amount of dollars and it has a support life of they're going to support us Palo Alto is going to support us for five years so that's what they're saying with this this is a pretty typical cybersecurity engineer with a company called Geologics and it is, let's see what else they're requiring here. I'll just skim through these. They're looking for you to have a security clearance, four years of developing cyber solutions, cybersecurity solutions, security authorization requirements, and security policies. This is a lot of writing for the federal government. It's a lot of writing and a lot of risk management framework, it sounds like to me. 
strong understanding of security design and architecture with the ability to develop solutions to moderately complex information system compliance and security problems. All right, let's see. Hands-on technical experience, and that includes Linux system administrator, Windows system administrator, network component administrator, VMware administrator. So they're looking for you to have some documentation skills and experience with some of these areas. That's good. Good stuff. Um, let me skim through this. I feel like this is going a little long on this particular job. But if you're interested in this, they're looking for you to have at least a Security Plus, preferably a CISSP, but a Security Plus is fine. Desired skills, they want you to have a skills with Tenable, Nessus scanning. But usually if you have some kind of scanning experience, they'll, you know, if you know one scanner, you, you pretty much can figure out Tenable or whatever other scanners they have. Experience with software assurance implementation. This is the one that's kind of, not a lot of people have this experience right here. Like actually looking at the software and, and, and figuring out where the vulnerabilities are in the software. That's not a common, most people don't. That's a real rare skill I've noticed in this field. So let's see, experience with highly matrixed organizations, Department of Defense, but it could be, you don't have to have Department of Defense experience to do this kind of stuff. If you have a strong risk management framework background, that, that would be enough. Verification, validation, and accreditation. Okay, they're looking for a bachelor's degree in science or STEM. And so normally, like they're looking for you to have a bachelor's degree in some kind of technical field and then four years of relevant experience. So if you had an experience in mathematics, and they say it right here, if you had experience in mathematics, then you could still get this job. If you've done the actual work in the past, then you could do it. All right, if you want to get this job right here, if you're interested in this, let me see if I can get the phone number or, yep, here we go. If you're looking for this job right here, here's the phone number, and I will put this in the link description below if you're interested in this position, but it is phone number 909-345-7222, and that's 909-345-7222, and that's with Geologics. And that's in Aurora, Colorado. You need to be security cleared and you need to have some background in cybersecurity engineering. All right, let's go to the next one.